Hello there, I'm Jason Zook. And I'm Caroline Zook, and we run Wandering Aimfully, which is an unboring coaching program for intentional online business owners. Welcome back to our series, Growing Through It, where we make over one of our community members' businesses. Because during these uncertain times, we wanna help people strengthen the foundation of their business. If you have an online business that has digital products, or if you're somebody whose offerings are suddenly not feasible anymore, like you do events or retreats, this case study is gonna be perfect for you to learn a ton of stuff. And without further ado, wow. let's jump into it. Let's get to it. Meet Lauren. So Lauren has a brand called Lauren Likes, which is an art business offering in-person workshops, retreats, and online creative courses. Now, Lauren is in the middle of a very big transition. She is currently moving back to the US from the United Arab Emirates, and her in-person offerings have a very uncertain future for obvious reasons. If you're watching this after this whole coronavirus pandemic is over, um, that's what we're going through right now. And so in-person offerings are not really something that is feasible right now. So not only is she moving, but her whole business kind of needs to pivot. So the goal is to reorganize and streamline her offerings to drive more sales of her online courses. And thankfully she does have that additional revenue stream that she can pivot to. So before we get into our suggestions for Lauren, I do wanna remind you that we have a seriously epic long blog post. We take you through those five things in this video, but if you want your own version that walks you through the whole thing, you can use the link below to click over to that article and you can also download this workbook and you can apply all of these five things to your own business. So check out the description box um, for a link to that workbook. Now moving back onto Lauren, I'm gonna give you a little preview of how this all ends up. So our top three recommendations for Lauren's business are gonna be to first streamline her offerings to focus solely on her digital courses. We talked about that to add a $1 course as a marketing bridge to her evergreen, another one of her evergreen digital courses, and then also to redesign her website structure to make her existing content lead into those marketing bridges. So really streamline her offerings, streamline her website, just really bring everything together and make it more effective. And so here's a little sneak peek of what the after is going to look like. First, let's start with the brand foundation. As you guys know, this is where we start everything. And it's really about answering four key questions. We call them the four Qs. It's who, why, what, and how. And the idea there is just to get super clear on these very, very crucial key pivotal parts of your business so that you can then build out a strategy from those four pieces. So let's walk you through those in relation to Lauren's business. First, starting with the who, this is your audience. So who does your business help? For Lauren, as we look through her website, you can see on her main site, right here at the top, we see adventurers, crafters, and storytellers. And that's kind of who she says that her brand is for. But one thing that I want to offer up to you guys as an option is I've seen this a lot where you kind of have these three buckets that you're putting your audience in, adventurers, crafters, storytellers in Lauren's case. One thing to consider is instead of keeping those buckets separate, really looking for the intersection of those buckets instead. So our first little hot tip here, if you feel like you're trying to define your audience by separate buckets, really consider defining them instead by the overlap. And so what we would recommend is coming up with some sort of moniker that really talks about the intersection. So not just people who would consider themselves adventurers, but people who would consider them, themselves adventurers who are also interested in crafting and creativity and also interested in storytelling. And what you're gonna do um, by doing that is coming up with a very specific type of person that you can always be speaking to. And so maybe for Lauren, we would call this, I just wrote down artful adventurers. I love of alliteration, you guys know that. But I think I've seen other places she has like creative adventurers or something um, like that. But really defining it in a very succinct format is gonna help you throughout your marketing messaging. And it's also gonna help people who follow you to start to feel like they have an identity within your brand. Like, oh, I'm an artful adventurer. I'm someone who loves to storytell and go seek out adventure and feel creative. So that is kind of what we'd recommend for her answering of the who question. Instead of this, these three different buckets, we would call them artful adventurers. And so these are creative people. They love exploring new territory in their outer and inner worlds, telling stories and making a positive impact on the world. And she can rewrite these in whatever phrases she knows her business better than I do, but this is always where we like to start off. So now moving on to the why. So why does your business exist? This is what we call your mission. What can you do to connect your reason for being as a business to some sort of purpose and vision that is greater than yourself? So I went looking for this on Lauren's site and I kind of found in her about section here, I love helping women learn to live and tell their stories. I believe that wherever you are, you can find adventure and that adventure is worth documenting, which I love. 
So for her, I wrote down, why does your business exist? I love helping women learn to embrace their creativity, tell their stories, and then use that creativity to do good in the world. I believe that wherever you are, you can find adventure and that adventure is worth documenting. I've been sprinkling in this whole do good in the world aspect because I know in conversations that I have with Lauren, she is hoping to steer the brand in that direction in the future is really connect this idea of creativity and adventure to using that energy for a, for a good force in the world. So I'm kind of sprinkling some of that in as well. And then let's move on to question number three, the what. What benefit does your business provide to your customer? This is not your features, this is not your offerings. These are not bullet points. This is like, how are you gonna make your customer or your client's life better? And so I went looking for some little fragments that I could use on her website. And under her Radiant Art Retreats, I found quite a bit of language around this idea of uninterrupted time for your creativity. So this retreat is for those who want to invite their creativity to have a more active role in their daily lives. So it's this idea of like really prioritizing your creativity, feeling inspired, feeling lit up. And so I'm gonna use that for this part of the foundation. So what benefit does your business provide to your customer? Artful adventurers will feel more energized and alive by connecting to their true creativity and others who share that passion. They will experience the richness of life by exploring their world and discovering adventure no matter where they are. And again, I just wanna emphasize, these long paragraphs are not necessarily things that you're gonna write on your website as just a chunk of a paragraph. I always like to include different phrases and different things that I can later on pluck out and put onto the website. So I really encourage you in this introductory phase, if you're filling out that workbook, write a sentence or two or three. Don't worry if it feels too wordy because you're gonna really use that to pluck out a bunch of phrases when you write your web copy and things like that. And now moving on to the fourth cue, the how. How does your business deliver that benefit? So this is really just about what are your offerings? What do you do in your business? And so for Lauren's business, again, we mentioned she has quite a few things. So we've got on her website, we've got journals and courses. And so we can see some of those aren't in session right now. Those are her digital courses. And then as you scroll down, you can also see she offers workshops and retreats. For her to answer this question, how do you deliver that benefit? Instead of saying art retreats, in-person art workshops, online courses, and her travel journal, which is quite a lot to begin with, but especially now in these coronavirus times, she's not able to deliver on all of these things right now, unfortunately. So we're just gonna say for right now, primarily online art courses is how she delivers that benefit. That is the brand foundation for Lauren. And so just to recap, here for her audience. It's gonna be artful adventurers. Her mission is gonna to be to empower women to tap into their creativity, come alive and be a force for good in the world. The benefit is gonna be creative embodiment and experiencing everyday adventure. And her offering is online creative courses. Now let's get into her product or service offering. This is kind of step two in the five step process. This is where the kind of strategy comes in for her business. So before the pandemic, Lauren had basically four different offerings. She had the art retreats, she had the in-person workshops, she had her digital courses, and then she also had this travel journal that she was producing. I spoke with Lauren and she did say actually the in-person workshops are kind of her her favorite out of those, if you will, um, because of the time investment being low and the money being good for it and really enjoying it. And so she was in the midst of kind of steering her business actually more so to the art retreats and the in-person workshop. She really enjoys that work. And we always tell people, if you have multiple offerings, evaluate them regularly and ask yourself these questions. Which is the best in terms of the least effort and time for the most amount of revenue gained and the most amount of enjoyment. So if you can kind of rank in those three categories, all of your offerings and find what is the one that really ticks all the boxes for you, usually that's a good idea that you should start to focus on that one because I see a lot of multi-passionate entrepreneurs, they just love ideas and so they're scattering their focus in all these different ways, not realizing they're making it harder on themselves by putting their energy into something that is maybe high time investment for low revenue versus focusing all their attention on something that is low time investment for high revenue, high return in terms of enjoyment and satisfaction. So really make sure that you're checking in with yourself often and ranking your offerings in those categories. So those were all of her offerings and she was gonna steer her business into these more in-person offerings, but then as we discussed, the world changed. So what do you do when your favorite offering is no longer a feasible option? Well, like many businesses, pivot. you pivot. <laughs> Hopefully we have a, a couple of friends, fans in the house and you will recognize this GIF. It is a popular one. 
but that's what we are really trying to do for Lauren is to pivot her business to these more digital courses. Jason and I would recommend basically what we call a phased approach, knowing what her life goals and her plans are. Phase one, I would say, is probably gonna be the next three to six months. And we really recommend going all in on these digital courses. And so that means once that those funnels and systems are in place, then she can maybe even start to consider peppering in like a digital workshop offering. I could see her offering like girls night crafting where she teaches a skill and maybe she even mails them the supplies or they order the supplies on Amazon or something like that. But she can still use this workshop skill set that she has for a more digital offering, but still regardless, I think really focusing on those digital courses and creating a foundation is smart for the next three to six months. After six months or whenever it's safe, nobody really knows the timeline at this point, she can start to consider expanding back into those in-person retreats and art events because I know that's what she enjoys in her business but it's really about the discipline of keeping these offerings kind of out of the mix until travel and gathering starts to be in, in demand and feasible again. Because until then, it's only taking up like mental real estate for her customer of like, oh, when are these retreats and should I do it or not? Until it's an option, take that off the table and go all in on these digital courses to make your efforts really potent and effective. So that kind of helps us with the question of what do we prioritize in terms of all of her offerings. So we're gonna say digital courses is the main thing we're gonna focus on. The rest of these we're gonna put on the back burner. We're gonna kind of like put them into the, the uh, archive for just a second, but this is the online course lineup. So if, if we're only focusing on online courses, now we have another prioritization issue, which is she has three different online courses. So she's got the stories from here, course, which is a $159 kind of live course, which is open and closed launch. She then has another course that is, she's about to launch, I believe, which is capture and create. And it's a lower price course, a $29 course. It's self-paced and she's going to make that evergreen and available all the time. And then she also has this other course, Art of Inspiration, which is again, $29, self-paced, evergreen. I think it used to be called Travel Like an Artist, but she's repurposing it to be more, um, less geared on travel for obvious reasons. Now kind of the question begs, okay, how do, what do we focus on with all of these? Because if you too are a multi-passionate person with many digital courses, your situation ends up a lot like this, which is you start promoting one of those courses and you say, hey, look, like my launch is coming up for stories from here. I'm so excited. Three weeks or four weeks later, you're like, okay, now here's another course. And oh, I forgot I need to promote that, capture and create. And then weeks later, you feel like, oh, I haven't even talked about art of inspiration for a while. I really need to talk about that. And so your focus and your promotion schedule ends up feeling like this. Like you're just going in all these different directions all the time and kind of trying to juggle it all into the air. And that can serve you for a while, but there is another way. That way is to create more of a product roadmap. So to create sort of a natural journey for your customer to go through your products. And so this is what we would recommend for Lauren is creating almost this like tiered approach. So the first step of that is gonna be we're actually gonna recommend that instead of $29, she offers this art of inspiration course for $1. And we're gonna talk about that more in depth in a second, but this basically creates now a roadmap where you have this, what we call an on-ramp course, a very low priced, first low investment, first kind of taste of your online courses which then feeds into your more core course. It's accessible to a wide range of audience. It's low priced. And then you're positioning your stories from here course as your more premium offering that you only offer sometimes it's seasonal, et cetera. And so when you do this and you create this roadmap, you can start to put all of your effort towards just getting people onto the on-ramp. And you have this one kind of focus in terms of putting all of your promotion efforts is just, hey, I have this $1 course, sign up for it. And what happens is by creating automated email sequences and, uh, and automated sequences on the back end, you can start to feed those people then into your core offering and then finally into your premium offering. And so everything is just flowing nicely together and your efforts are going towards this one offering, which is then kind of overflowing into the other products. And it does take some work in order to create that infrastructure. But once you do, it can be working for you in the background. Hot tip, create a roadmap between your products so that you don't feel like you're always scattering your promotion efforts. So now let's talk about that. Once we've kind of gone through all of the math of her offerings, let's talk about now the marketing strategy and the customer journey behind all of that roadmap that we just laid out for you. And this basically just means what is the marketing bridge to get someone to buy your product or service? What is going to take someone from stranger 
like I just found out about you to customer. That's what the, the whole marketing bridge section is about. And for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about when I say marketing bridge, this is a metaphor that we talk about a lot, which is just the idea that basically everybody out there on the internet is on the mainland, one big piece of land, they're hanging out. And you have to imagine that your offering is this castle on an island far, far away. And your job as a business owner is to create a bridge built with trust, built with you know different touch points in order to lead somebody over to your island where your castle is and to buy from you. You really have to create a journey for them to go on. And so this is kind of our exercise for determining that journey is just create this little diagram. And right now, the bridge for getting someone to basically from a stranger all the way to buy her capture and create course, this is kind of how the bridge sits at this moment. Someone basically just comes from Instagram they sign up for the course waitlist on Linktree. They receive her weekly newsletter, which does build trust. And then eventually they'll get the launch emails when she launches the course and hopefully purchase the course. And so that's kind of the existing bridge for the capture and create course. Now, let me just show you how this kind of lives in action here. If I'm on her Instagram, I have to click all the way to the waitlist or to the Linktree. Then I have to click again to the landing page for the course. And then this is where I'll enter my email address and I'll start to get the newsletters. For me, I think the experience is just A, you're not gonna get enough people that are gonna click through if that's the only place that you're really getting an influx of people. She does have a sizable um, and, and a very engaged Instagram audience, but it's just never gonna be enough people to really get them on that list for the revenue goals that I know she, she has. In addition, on her main course site, she also down here in the courses section, there isn't a lot of information on what the courses are, but then she has an email sign up to say, notify me when the class is back in session. So again, you really have to be someone who's like maybe read about it on her Instagram and said, I really want to be in this course in order to go ahead and sign up. And so what we can improve about that experience is we can create a compelling offer to entice more people to get onto her email list, which means more people to potentially buy the course. And then we also can make signups much more prevalent throughout the rest of her online properties. And so to do that, this is where that $1 on-ramp course comes back into action. So we would recommend to lead into that evergreen course, which is the capture and create course that we're trying to sell, the $29 course. We would consider making her Art of Inspiration course that $1 on-ramp course. And this is a little sneak peek of the website makeover that we're doing later on, but we would put this front and center on the website and really make it compelling for people to say, hey, you can start your art journey today for just $1 and have that option for them. And you might be asking yourself, why $1? Well, especially if you're in something that's considered maybe a hobby industry, which is a lot of these creative industries, people are gonna need some type of qualification in order to get on your email list in this way. And what I mean by that is, you're gonna have a lot of people who are just interested in doing freebies and they're never gonna pay you, especially because again, it's a hobby industry. So it's not like, oh, I'm gonna sign up for this web design course and I know it's gonna help me lead to more revenue in my business on the back end. It's really about your own creativity, your own kind of personal growth. Instead of having maybe a free opt-in as your big thing, you can start to qualify people a little bit. These are people who are willing to take out a credit card, even if it's just for a dollar, and they're interested in buying an online course, even if it is just a dollar. So that's why we would recommend testing that out. I actually think it's more attention grabbing than maybe offering something for free because free is so widely available nowadays free opt-ins and lead magnets and things, you don't see $1 courses that often. So from that perspective, it's just an opportunity to try something very different. And then finally, it gives your potential customer a taste of your teaching style. Again, instead of just having like a free download, really getting them into a course where they can see how you lay things out, see how you teach things. Again, that's only gonna serve to further qualify those people to maybe purchase your capture and create course. Now let's talk about with that idea in mind, how can we start to transform this marketing bridge? So this is what we recommend as the new bridge for capture and create. Person is gonna land on her website or blog post. So we're gonna add a lot more opt-ins to all of the content she's already creating, all feeding to this sign up for the $1 art of inspiration course. And so as we mentioned, it's gonna look something like this. It can look totally different than that, but this is the one that we mocked up. Always trying to promote that as the on-ramp. 
once someone signs up for that, they can start to receive an automated email sequence that is a companion to the actual course content. And so maybe that looks something like this, welcome to the course, it's delivering value, it's walking them through, it's getting them excited about their creativity. Whenever that automated series is complete, the next step could then be to receive a pitch for then the capture and create course. And so you've just led with all this value. You've gotten someone used to your teaching style. That person you know is qualified because they're taking an online course about art and creativity. And so then you say, hey, thanks for completing this course. Do you want to uplevel your photo game? Do you, you know, whatever the language is around why this course is compelling. And then you want to offer them an offer for being a art of inspiration student. And so that could be something as small as a bonus because you do need to create some type of urgency for them to then upgrade to the core offering. So you can do that in the form of a bonus. Like, hey, if you join the course in the next 48 hours, you get my extra like paper downloads or, or art prints or things like that. Or you could even just change the price to a $39 course and then offer them a discount of $10 and so they could get the, the course for $29 if they purchase within the time window. If you are gonna have an evergreen course, you do need some sort of urgency for people to buy right then. And so with that new bridge, then you're gonna get more purchases of that course because again, they have already paid you money, they trust you, they like your course, and now they are getting an offer at a time where they're most excited to get that offer. And then what's cool about this is once you kind of have that bridge in place, because we did the product roadmap, now you have this second bridge that you can build out between your capture and create buyer to your more premium offer, your stories from here course. And so for that bridge, I would say in the final lesson of the capture and create course, I would have like a little teaser to stories from here live. I would say, hey, we do this once a quarter. Here's what this course is. It's really a lot more in depth. It's You get all these different things and just kind of having a teaser to that. And that way that person's already gonna be on your newsletter because they signed up for the $1 course. They're gonna be building trust with you. You're gonna be delivering value to them each week on your newsletter. And then they're gonna to start to receive your launch emails for when you do do the story, do do. When you do do the stories from here live course, open and close launch. Now they've built all this trust with you and they can really take advantage of that offer. And then I would also consider maybe even creating a custom pitch email only to people who have, this is where your tagging system kind of comes in handy. If you have tags set up in your email provider for people who have purchased the capture and create course, I would consider sending a specific pitch email to those people and saying, hey, you are already a student. You clearly value your creativity. Only students of Capture and Create are gonna be able to, let's say, get $29 off their Stories From Here registration, which is basically the price of the course that they paid before. So they're basically getting that first course for free. And again, you're just creating this upsell, if you will, um, to use marketing terminology to that premium offering. And then hopefully someone purchases that Stories From Here live course. And again, you can start to see how those bridges really feed into each other and they're all working for the same purpose. So now with this structure in place, Lauren just has to focus on the one compelling offer to promote when her live course isn't in session. So she can put it in her Instagram bio, she can talk about it on her podcast and just really try to get people enticed with that singular offer and the automated sequences that she creates are gonna do the heavy lifting for her. On her newsletter, she can also nurture leads to build trust, making her pitch to her course even more effective. She could do something like at the bottom of every newsletter, here is the free lesson to capture and create, check it out, see if you like it. So then she can kind of build in these other little mini bridges in between each of those steps to make it more effective and to convert higher. So that is the marketing bridge section. Now let's talk about audience building, which she already has a really strong grip on. For those of you who haven't seen our previous videos, we kind of have a three-pronged audience building approach. We call it your content salad. Uh, step one is your lettuce, which is your foundation articles to drive traffic or pull in search traffic to your site. Two is your fixins, your toppings, um, which is anything that's like a newsletter or a podcast. It's ongoing content that really builds trust with people. And then finally, your dressing is all your social media content that you put on top of that and you push people back to your other content. So let's go through each of these for Lauren. For her articles, she again has this blog site that's kind of separate and she has really great photos and really great articles and she teaches a whole bunch of stuff. But the thing about her blog that we can really improve on is just connecting it to her main site to make sure that every single post is 
easy to opt into that on-ramp course. So she does do some call-outs in her blog post now, but again, I just find that because all of these articles are so long and there's not, it's not easy to navigate around, it's hard to get to the bottom of a post, it's hard to get into different posts. I would also recommend doing a major content audit and retitling some of those blog posts to be more searchable. So I think that that first post that we showed was about taking better photos of your furry BFF. And so it was about photographing your pets, but people aren't gonna be searching take photos of furry BFFs, right? They're gonna say like, how to take better photos of my dog, how to take better photos of my pet. So just like little tweaks like that can start to get more of that searchable traffic to her blog, rather than just people who are already on her newsletter or already on her podcast. And then finally, we already mentioned this, but just making the blog easier to navigate. Like, can I get the content that I am craving as a visitor easily? So this is just an example of how this could look and we'll show it to you at the end with the design that we show you, but really it's just about bringing it all together, making sure that the blog lives on the same site that you're gonna be promoting your courses and things like that. So it's all under one roof. For each post, again, creating at the very bottom of every single post, a call out and a call to action to get started with that $1 course. From a logistics standpoint, all you have to do is use something like Teatree, which is our course platform that I know Lauren is getting ready to move all of her courses to, create a $1 payment page and just this button in Squarespace can then just link to your payment page for that. So that's just an easy way of implementing that tactic. But I will say that in addition to having this warm bridge that we talk about, because somebody has to be, again, pretty interested in taking a course if they're gonna enter their credit card, even if it is just a dollar, and you don't wanna lose out on people who maybe aren't ready yet. They don't know Lauren that well. They just landed on her blog from a Pinterest post or something. So we would also recommend doing an exit intent pop-up for a colder bridge, which would be something like a lead magnet. So maybe she puts together like a PDF of 30 days of creative art prompts, something that's enticing to her target audience, making sure that she has that set up as an exit intent so that if I get down to the bottom and I go, well, I'm not ready to pay a dollar for this course, I go off to somewhere else and at least I'm getting a pop-up that maybe I can capture some of those colder people and try to get them onto the newsletter. So for every blog post, you have the warm bridge, the $1 course, and then you also have the cold bridge, the 30-day prompt list. And that's, you can kind of get people wherever they are in their interest level. And then moving on to her newsletter, she has a great newsletter. It's very consistent that she sends it. It's very colorful, it's joyful, it's inspiring, and which is great for her target audience. The thing that I would improve upon with her newsletter is just narrowing down her calls to action. Because of all the things we outlined, she has a lot of different things she's promoting. Right now, at the bottom of her newsletter, there's a lot of different routes that I can take. And I think just streamlining everything and giving you that one core call to action is gonna make that more obvious and have more people convert to that whether it's the $1 Art of Inspiration course or the Capture and Create call out that we showed before. Moving on to her podcast, which is also kind of her fix-in content. She has this wonderful podcast called How She Creates. She uploads episodes and the content itself is fantastic. What's great about it is that it's already designed to attract her ideal audience. So I think her artful adventurers would be very interested in the content already and she's consistent with it. And she also creates a blog post for every single episode, which is very smart because then people can find the episodes and that's one way that you can get some of those people on the mainland over to your marketing bridge. But what we can improve upon is using the podcast as a vehicle to promote the Lauren Likes courses more. So I listen to an episode, I'm sure she does it sporadically, but really investing and saying, okay, if I'm gonna do this podcast and invest all this time into it, it needs to at least be serving my business purpose. So something as simple as having like a mid roll in the middle of the episode ad for your own course, or at the beginning or at the end, talking about your courses, getting people to that $1 art of inspiration course. Don't be afraid to sell people on your own courses. Like it's better than taking, I mean, I'm not saying it's better than sponsorship from other brands, but if you're gonna do ads for another brand, you might as well do it for yourself. And if you don't do ads at all, just remind yourself, what am I putting all this time and effort into it if it's not serving my greater business purpose? So really just making that a priority to talk about your courses and to really try to get a listener from being in that listening experience to then finally taking action and signing up for that on-ramp course. 
And then finally her social, I don't really have any changes here. She has a great little audience going here. I love her content. Her aesthetic is vibrant and visually cohesive, but the, what I love about her photos and her Instagram audience is her photos don't feel overly posed or curated. Like they still have this very real quality to them, which I think is a part of that special sauce of hers, a part of what her di differentiator is she's very approachable. And so she also offers value and tips in her posts for taking photos and creating, which is great. She's not just saying like, oh, here's a photo of me. It's like, hey, here's how to take a better photo using portrait mode on your phone, which is again, valuable content to really get people to wanna to take her courses. And she engages with her audience. She asks them to help her name her courses and things like that, which I think is fantastic. The final section of our checklist, the website. I mentioned this several times, but really the thing with Lauren's website is that each individual piece has wonderful parts to it, but the architecture is just so scattered. So you have this, the courses and the retreats main site, which lives on, I think, courses.laurenlikes.com. And then you've got the blog and the podcast living on this totally separate looking site. And then you've got these email signup landing pages using MailChimp. And so it just feels very disjointed and like none of it is like working together in harmony. So our goal is gonna be to combine these into one home, like one digital place where it can all live. Lauren expressed to me that she was going, I think she purchased our Thicket template, which is a Squarespace template that we created and that you get access to inside our Wayme Unlimited uh, membership. And so she, I believe, is going to use that in order to redesign a new site. So I just went off of that basic template and added all of these different sections um, using our AppSosa framework that we talk about. So let me actually walk you through that framework. The AppSosa stands for Audience, Problem, Solution, Outcome, Sauce, and Action. And this is just a way that you can ensure that you're telling a story throughout your website. And we've pretty much already mentioned all of these different pieces throughout, but here's what I wrote down. I write this down every time I go to design a website. So her audience is artful adventurers. The problem, again, she might rewrite all of this because she knows her audience better than I do, but you're a creative curious being, but you find it so hard to make time for your creativity. That's going back to some of the stuff we picked up from her current website. And then the solution is how do you solve that problem? Well, Lauren Likes art courses will teach you how to experience adventure in your everyday life and come alive through creativity. The outcome is like the future that you're really painting for someone once they have taken your solution. So imagine a life where every single day is a new adventure in creativity and you feel inspiration in everything that you see and do. Her sauce, this is kind of like what your unique personality is. For her, I think it's that down to earth, enthusiastic, imperfectly accessible personality and tone. And then the action is what is the core, the one call to action that you're gonna have people take. And so we're gonna really emphasize that uh, $1 start your art journey. So that's kind of what we outlined for the AppSosa framework. And now we can see that in action in the page that I designed. So I just whipped this together in XD using Thicket as kind of a template. It doesn't matter what order you put all these pieces in. It's not like it has to be app Sosa, like audience, you know, problem, et cetera. You can scatter it around, but um, this is where all the pieces live on the site that I designed. So I love making the outcome, the really big headline. So come alive, embody your creativity, experience adventure in your everyday. I love writing copy on a website as though you're writing a letter to your audience member. Here, we have online art courses for the artful adventurer. You're clearly speaking to your audience so that they know exactly who you're for. And then also we included a little bit of the how from the four cues. Online art courses for artful adventurers. I know right away what Lauren does and who she's for just in that one sentence. And then the next section is all about the action steps. So we made that really bold and really obvious to try to get that warm bridge, the $1 art of inspiration course and did it in a contrasting color so it really stands out. And then moving on down the page, we have the problem. I kind of like having some type of hero section where you at a glance can know what the brand is about, then having your action section. And then I usually think that the next section that makes sense is the problem solution section. The problem is all about speaking in the language of your target audience and making them feel like you know what their pain points are. So she might rewrite this, but I said, you know you're a creative curious being, but you find it hard to make time for your creativity. And then the important part is right after the problem, positioning yourself as the solution. You're doing two things. You're telling them how you solve their problem, but you're also showing them like what you offer so they can wrap their heads around who you are as a brand. So this is where we said, Lauren Likes Art Courses will teach you how to experience adventure in your everyday life and come alive through creativity. And we also kind of sprinkled in the what from the four cues there, which is the benefit that her courses provide you with. I also love having some type of offering section, um, which usually makes sense right after the solution, where if 
you sell products, you're kind of showing at a glance like what you sell, or if you are a client-based business, you show what services you offer. Again, just so at a glance, if I'm coming to your website for the first time, I don't have to wonder what courses are you talking about or what services do you offer? Like you just, at a glance, somebody can see quickly, oh, these are the two core courses that she offers there. Moving down the page, we also had a second action section, and this is again for the cold bridge. So this is the lead magnet download, get on the newsletter, and we did that quite a bit further down from the $1 course offer, and that's just to try and get anyone who isn't ready to take that step to pay money for the course, but maybe we still wanna get them and nurture them on that newsletter until they are ready to opt into that first on-ramp. And then finally, her sauce, we have a little my story section. Her personal story and personality behind the brand is a big, influencing factor in you know people connecting with her and resonating with her, so we wanna include that as well. All right, so that is the website, let's recap. So just to go over it again, our top three recommendations are to streamline her offerings, to focus solely on digital courses, to add a $1 course as her marketing bridge to her evergreen course, and to redesign her website structure to make her content lead into her marketing bridges. This is kind of the before, we have the separate sites, and this is the after, so we're creating one nice place for everything to live. It's vibrant. Um, she had a designer already with these branding pieces. So it's very colorful. It's very vibrant. It feels inviting, but yet everything is organized in a way where it doesn't feel disjointed. And it really leads you on a story um, and you know exactly what actions that you're being led to take. That's my favorite thing about the new homepage. And then we also just mocked up what her blog page could look like, again, using Thicket as the guide. I think a real game changer for her is going to be having her articles and her podcast live on the same site as where she's trying to sell these courses. You know, and by, by transitioning her, her site architecture to something like Squarespace, she can spin up these landing pages whenever she wants instead of having everything housed on different domains and things like that. That's it. We hope you guys got a ton of little nuggets that you can apply to your business, some practical things that you can do to strengthen the foundation of your business during these uncertain times. And we also wanted you to know that we are reopening our coaching program on May 18th. So if you're interested in that and joining our community, definitely check out the link in the description. We have a free coaching session for you to kind of test drive the program and we take you through the AppSosa framework, which we talked about in this video, helps you improve your website. So definitely, again, check out the link in the description for that. Alrighty, we'll be back next week with another one of these business makeovers. And if you liked it, uh, hit the like button. And if you want more of it, hit the subscribe button. And if you want your phone to ring, every time we upload a video, hit the bell. I don't know how the bell works. We don't, I'm assuming we don't that that's what it does. We're I don't not know. Sure. And then leave a comment if you want to let us know that you enjoyed this. But uh, those are all the things that you say at the end of YouTube videos. So congratulations. We did it. You did it. We're here. Adieu. Adieu. Goodbye.